In a remote forest commune, Shepard leads an all-women cult of wives, daughters, and female children. Selah, who was born into the cult, wishes to be chosen to receive Shepard's grace as she repeatedly spies him selecting different wives for each night. Hi friends and drama nerds! Welcome back! Today drama is about a movie titled, The Other Lamb. In the opening scene, we are taken to a secluded and distanced forest compound, which is owned by a polygamist sect. The community's revered leader, known as the Shepherd, is the sole male figure, and the women in the group worship him, expressing gratitude for accepting them as his wives. Within this cult, the women are categorized into two groups, the daughters dressed in various shades of blue, and the wives dressed in reddish. The community's main activities involve raising lambs for sustenance and sacrificial rituals. The scene then takes us to the Shepherd having a meal together with all of his wives and daughters. After finishing with dinner, then he selects one of his wives to spend the night with. The next morning, the shepherd accompanied by all his wives and daughters, gathers in a courtyard while delivering a sermon. One of the daughters named Selah remains fixated on him without even blinking. She appears to have a strong admiration towards the shepherd. After the sermon, they engage in prayer, during which the shepherd dips his hand into the blood of a sacrificed lamb and smears it on the faces of his wives and daughters. Later on, as Selah and her friend Tamar are standing in the woods, they are captivated by the shepherd's presence at a distance. Selah wants to have a private conversation with him, so she cleverly sends her friend to attend to some household tasks. After this, Selah walks with the shepherd, who compliments her beauty and mentions her mother who passed away during her birth. In response, Selah asks how he met her mother in the first place. She is curious if they were involved in a romantic relationship. However, instead of answering her question, the shepherd playfully touches her hair and tries to get closer to her. But at the last second, he swiftly changes the subject and requests Selah to rebraid her hair before they part ways. Later that day, one of the wives named Eloise shares a romantic story with Selah and another daughter. She explains that she had an intense session with the shepherd. Upon hearing this, Selah, who harbors affection for the shepherd, becomes envious and responds to Eloise in a harsh manner. The other daughter intervenes, reminding Selah that they are not permitted to speak to the wives with such a tone. Nonetheless, Selah denies this rule, arguing that Eloise is of the same age as them. Shortly after, another wife enters the scene, and the daughter reports Selah's rude behavior towards Eloise. As a consequence, Selah is assigned the task of delivering leftover food to a small, dimly lit hut, where menstruating women are secluded due to the belief that they are impure. Inside the hut, Selah encounters two unhealthy women and engages in a conversation with one of them named Sarah. The latter, whose chest bears scars, warns Selah about the shepherd's acts of violence. She asserts that once Selah enters the menstrual cycle, the shepherd will treat her in the worst possible way. However, Selah dismisses the warning as she still perceives the shepherd as a good person. The same night, as she is putting her younger sisters to bed, she looks out the window and notices the shepherd engaging in romance with one of his wives. This makes her really jealous, but she can't do anything about it. In the morning, the wives assist the shepherd in bathing, and one of them informs him that a new lamb is about to take birth. In another room, two other wives help Selah clean herself because she is going to be with the shepherd soon. It is then revealed that the lamb mentioned by the wives earlier is none other than Selah herself. In the next scene, we see Selah sitting alone in a peaceful field, eventually drifting off to sleep. She awakens to the sound of lambs nearby and rises to investigate. She discovers one of the lambs severely injured and on the brink of death, bleeding profusely. In a distressing turn of events, Selah realizes that she, too, is bleeding. Troubled by this revelation, she examines herself later that night but doesn't find any answers. She can't even fall asleep due to the continuous bleeding. Tamar, who is by Selah's side, notices her distress and inquires about what happened. Selah makes up a story, stating that she dozed off in the field, during which a wild dog attacked and killed one of the lambs. She goes on to say that the wives took her to the shepherd, who generously forgave her for the incident. The following night, Selah is jolted by the sound of a police car's siren, prompting her to peep through the window. Overhearing a conversation between a police officer and the shepherd, she learns that their group must evacuate the premises. The officer grants them a limited amount of time to comply or else they will have to face legal actions. In response, the shepherd gathers all his wives and daughters the next morning to deliver the sad news. He explains that they must leave their current location to avoid the potential destruction brought upon by the outside world, which could tear them apart. He also announces his intention to lead them in search of a new home. This revelation saddens Selah, and while she is sitting alone, the shepherd approaches her, offering words of encouragement and emphasizing the importance of her strength for the sake of the numerous young daughters who depend on her. Following this, the cult assembles with their belongings and engages in a collective prayer before embarking on a long journey in search of their new home. They travel through forests and mountains, walking for an entire day, until they reach a point where they decide to camp and spend the night in the woods.
woods. During that night, Selah experiences a nightmare, envisioning herself immersed in water alongside two other daughters. She also witnesses the shepherd slitting the throat of a lamb. Early in the morning, they resume their journey and after a considerable duration, they stumble upon an abandoned house. Selah and some other women enter to inspect the premises, but the shepherd declares that they cannot stay there because it is a broken house made by broken people. As a result, they set their tents outside the house, preparing for another night in the open. The following morning, Selah displays signs of illness, vomiting and appearing unwell. Later on, she secretly examines the blood on her thighs, only to be noticed by one of the daughters. This makes the latter scream in fear, and she shouts that Selah has become impure. As a result, she is compelled to join a group of banished wives. That evening, Selah engages in conversation with Sarah, who discloses that she was one of the shepherd's first two wives. The other one was none other than Selah's mother. Sarah explains that initially, the shepherd used to show her favor, but now, he has become rude and hostile to her, and he always punished her for no reason. When Selah expresses skepticism, Sarah compares the shepherd's attention to the sun, initially radiant and glorious, but eventually causing them to burn. As their conversation continues, Sarah reveals the truth to Selah that her mother did not die during her birth, but rather succumbed to an infection a few days later. She explains that the shepherd did not take her to the hospital, viewing it as a test of her faith, resulting in her death from sepsis. Furthermore, Sarah admits that she no longer holds faith in the shepherd, but still stays in the cult due to a lack of alternatives and fear of being alone. In the next scene, the cult continues their journey alongside a country road. During this, Selah catches sight of a passing car with three people inside. She fantasizes herself within the vehicle, dressed like a regular teenager, which brings her to tears. That night, they all make camp at a certain spot, and while they are having their dinner, Selah gazes at a pregnant Eloise, who also stares back at her while gently caressing her belly. The next day, during the difficult hike, Eloise suddenly goes into labor. The other wives believe it is time for birth, but Eloise is unable to gather the courage to do so. She fears that the baby will die in this treacherous environment. However, when the other wives force her, she pushes hard and eventually gives birth. In the process though, she sadly loses her own life. After the incident, the group prepares for Eloise's funeral, during which Sarah confronts the shepherd and holds him accountable for the woman's demise. She even addresses him by his real name, Michael. However, the shepherd dismisses her accusations and walks away. After the funeral, Sarah confides in Selah, informing her that she and Eloise's baby are departing from the cult. She reveals that the shepherd wants the newly born infant to die, believing that the baby is somehow flawed. Selah struggles to comprehend the shepherd's reasoning, and Sarah discloses that it is because the infant is a boy, and the shepherd does not want any other males in the cult other than himself. The remaining members of the community continue following the shepherd's lead, although exhaustion looms over them after days of non-stop walking. Later, they take a short break and sit on the ground to rest. At that moment, Tamar points out a potential location, suggesting that they explore it. But this only enrages the shepherd, as he believes that no other leader should exist aside from himself. In a fit of rage, he kicks and physically assaults Tamar. Witnessing this brutal act, Sela's trust in the shepherd begins to crumble, and she recalls Sarah's earlier warnings about him. After a long journey, they finally reach a forested valley with a large lake, which the shepherd proclaims as their new sacred place. This makes the women somewhat happy as they are tired to death. In the evening, the shepherd performs a re-baptism ritual, submerging the older daughters beneath the water. When it comes to Sela's turn, the shepherd forcefully holds her underwater for an extended period. In that moment, Sela has a vision of him attempting to drown her. Later, while gathered around the campfire, the wives abstain from dinner, explaining that they are fasting in preparation for an upcoming ritual the next day. During the same night, the daughters are sleeping in a tent. When the shepherd summons Sela to his own tent, Tamar warns her not to go, but Sela disregards the advice. Once inside the shepherd's tent, he instructs her to lie down. He proceeds to touch Sela's body and forcefully assaults her. After satisfying his desires, he bids her good night and departs. Unfortunately, this leaves a deep scar in Sela's mind, and she envisions a scenario in which all the daughters unite to overthrow and kill the shepherd. The following morning, the daughters wake up only to discover that all the wives are missing. In search of their mothers, they head down to the lake, where they find the shepherd kneeling near the discarded robes of the wives. When they inquire about the whereabouts of their mothers, the shepherd says that they have ascended into a new existence, and now it is the daughter's duty to take their place. He singles out Selah, designating her as his wife. However, Selah fearlessly confronts him, claiming that he is not their shepherd and she does not want his grace. This enrages the shepherd, prompting him to smack her. But in a shocking act of defiance, she stands her ground and slaps him back. In the aftermath of these events, two police officers discover the dead bodies of the wives, washed ashore on the lake's edge. They venture deep into the woods to find more clues. To their horror, they discover
discover the lifeless body of the shepherd, suspended between two trees and adorned with ram's horns placed on his head like a fawn. In the final scene, the daughters gather together at a waterfall, while Selah cradles a baby lamb in her arms.